guys, welcome to Tea Talk. What we're going to do is we're going to start a series, we're going to sit down and we're going to drink tea and we're going to talk about some of our stories, what we've had around the world and, uh, well, any sort of situation. Yeah. Yeah. What are we going to start with, Ron? I think we're going to have to start with deserts. I do like deserts, I've been to a few. I've yeah. got some stories, man. Pat's got some stories in the deserts. I've got, I've got some stories in the desert. Well, I've got stories in one desert, to be honest with you. And mine lasted for about five minutes, but... That's, that's still a story, still a story. I'd, I'd love to hear it. Well, I, I, I'd love to tell everyone. I can't, I can't wait to tell everyone about this. You know, should I go first? Yeah. Age before beauty, as I always say. He's always hitting me with that one. I still don't get where he's coming from. I look in the mirror and I feel quite happy with the way I look, especially when I got my uh, so famous T-shirt. But anyway, they're going to be online soon. Well, by the time this video comes out, I think we're pr pretty much going to be on a bang, the two-year anniversary of when we went out into the desert when we was at Supercross out in Las Vegas. So me and Scotty, we flew out to Vegas for the Money Cup with Monster Energy there, and they arranged all these kind of activities for us. And the first day we got there, what did they do? They took us all the way back to California, and we, we, well, we didn't know what we were doing, to be honest, until we pulled up on the side of the road in Baker, California, and jumped in these Yamaha buggies, YXZ Yamahas, ready to go. We signed a bunch of paperwork, insurance stuff, just in case we rolled in, which... Sign your life away. Pretty much, and more likely, once you sign a bit of paper saying, you know, we're insurance papers, you think, these things are dangerous. But anyway, we was fired right up and we was ready for it. So anyway, what we did is we all turned up, there's a bunch of us, me, Scotty, Beswick, Peraza, uh, everyone from the Monster team was there, okay? Anyway, so we started going off. Going and going, we've seen all the sights, I'm gonna put up some pictures of the cactuses and all these desert experiences. You guys may have seen some of it from Scotty's video. I'm gonna put a link in there. It's when we went to Las Vegas. There's a bunch of footage from it, but guys, what no one knows is, for that split few seconds, halfway through, in the middle of that desert, me and Scotty had a little bit of a situation where it had to stop, and when we looked up, everyone was gone. Now, Pat, I've got to talk to you about this. Yeah, that's, I've been in a similar situation, man. How'd they yeah. feel? I've got to be honest with you. For that split second, I didn't know what was happening. Where is it, man? This is bad. We're in the middle of the Mojave Desert, and I don't know how to, how to deal with this. So anyway, try not to panic. We didn't have no water. We, we, we had our mobile phones, I've got to say, but the service Did was you have a bit some? Rough. Yeah, I was going to say, you don't really get signal in the desert, do you? One bar, okay? Ooh. And do you know what the problem is when you get stuck in the desert and you're on the way to Vegas? All you can think about is just making sure you get back because you want to be in Vegas and you want to be partying. That's the primary concern. That is and the primary concern. And not like water, no. survival, you know, you just want to party. Oh, that's, that's the number one concern, right? All I'm looking for is lights in the distance. And what did I catch? A light in the distance? Well, almost, guys. What I caught was, was a little bit of smoke coming from one of the tyres. It must have been like a mile away. We managed to do is we managed to take the right road and catch up with the team. I've got to be honest, once we pulled over the refuel, I was over it. We was at the... The Nevada border, and I was like, I think I'm done here, guys. I think I may uh, shoot off home. Mine was a genuine scared experience where I thought I was stuck in the desert and I didn't know what to do. And in that moment, I realized that no money in my pocket was going to save me in that desert. See, luckily, you were there with a mate. Yeah. Same thing happened to me. I was all alone, and that was truly terrifying. I don't know how you did it. I so, I was actually in Kazakhstan, a completely foreign country. Um, <laughs> Middle of nowhere. Yeah. Uh, I was just cycling along, took a wrong turn. I thought it was a road, turns out it was not a road, it was just some military dirt track. But I had the wind with me, so I'm, you know, I'm going real fast, so I'm pedaling for about yeah. two hours, you know, not caring. Didn't see a single person, you know, that you'd think that'd be a sign, but I just kind of, you know, I just, when you're going that fast, you just want to keep smashing the miles, keep pedaling. What about records? Exactly, man. That's that's what I was there for. It was a break. I want to break a record. In the, well, I don't want to break a record in the Kazakhstan desert, but why not break one? Exactly. Yeah. Well, you're there. I mean, you might as well. Yeah. So I'm pedaling along, and then I can't see any people. You know, I can't see anything. To be fair, all I can see is camels. You know, camels and horses. Wild camels, wild horses. No people around. You know, you just got camels running around. Yeah. Um, and the road, it kept like turning off. You know, to the left, to the right. There's no signs. So luckily, I didn't have a map, but I had yeah. a compass. Okay. So I'm, you know, I'm, I knew I was heading east. 
you know, China was to the east, so I'm, I'm heading east. Yeah, yeah it makes no, sense. So okay, every yeah. time I get to the crossroads, pull out my compass and I kind of go, well, this, you know, this one's going to be going east, yeah. so let's, let's go that way. Uh, but then after about, you know, probably two, three hours into the ride, you know, the rides are getting worse and worse, and I find myself just pushing the bike. You know? okay. Couldn't even cycle anymore, it's just sand, so I'm pushing my bike through the sand. Kind of thinking, do you know what? Maybe this isn't the road, you know. Maybe I'm. Like maybe, maybe I'm. Maybe I'm yeah. yeah. And I mean, now, you know, thinking that it took me three hours to realise that, it's pretty stupid, really. But at the time, you know, I think it was just the wind, you know, because I was going so fast. I just didn't want to stop. You know? If I would have been with you, after about three minutes, I'd have asked if we were going in the right direction. <laughs> yes, yeah. Well, you're sensible. I'm not. I am sensible. So I just carried on. Yeah. So I just carried on, and. Um, but at that point, I kind of thought, you know what, I'm going to try and find out where I am. So I could see all these little settlements in the distance. So that's kind of what I felt safe because of that. Because I, yeah. you know, I just thought, oh, there's people over there, there's people over there. Like they're, they're far away in the distance. But I thought, surely if there's little huts and stuff, like that, you know, I can't be lost. Yeah. Um, but at that point, I thought, you know, I'm pushing my bike through the sand and I'm just kind of going, do you know what, I'm going to go. Did you look in the hut? That's what I wanted. Right? Well, yeah, that's exactly what I did. So I went up to one of the huts. Uh, and there's nothing there, you know, it's been abandoned for about 20 or 30 years. So there's cars, you know, the cars that look all right from a distance, you know, when you get there, they're literally just rusty wrecks. And at that point, you kind of realize you're banging trouble. I'm in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And well, same as yourself, I had no, or maybe you had like a liter of water. Okay. Uh, but at that point, I realized, crap, I have no idea where I am. All I had was a compass, which by that point, because I started zigzagging from one hut to the next, you know. I had no idea where I was. Do you know what I would have done? I would have ended it right there. What do you mean ended it? I would have done myself. How would you manage that? I had no idea, but I think I would have felt better doing that than having that kind of feeling inside me of being lost in the middle of Kazakhstan. It's not another feeling. I can imagine it's not. Yeah, I can tell I you that. I had it for a few minutes and then you done me. Yeah, see, I had it for a good, like, I think it was a probably about an hour until I actually found someone. So I started just walking through the sand, you know, just still, you know, still got my compass, still heading east, uh, and eventually I saw a load of camels, you know, yeah. and what looked like a person, you know, and the guy was miles away, so, you know, he looked like a person, so I thought, you know what, I'm gonna run up to him, you know, see where the crack is, see where I am. So, I get to the guy, and of course, this thing being Kazakhstan, no one actually speaks English, so I had to speak Russian, which, you know, and speak a bit of it, but enough to get me out of trouble. Luckily. So what did you say? Um, I asked him if that was the road to the next town, and the guy... Is that Russian? Oh, God, I can't remember now, mate. You, you put me on the spot here, you know, you caught me out, you caught me out. Uh, Privyet. That's hello. Uh, Spasiba, thank you. Um, yeah, I don't know, at the time, you know, when I was, when I was there... Where am I? That's what I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. on yeah. now, isn't it? Um, Odkuda, where are you from? That's what people always used to ask me. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so I get to the guy, and you know, in broken Russian, I'm kind of going, you know, is, is this the road to the next town? And the guy was terrified, you know, because yeah. all of a sudden he's, he's a kid, you know, a white kid in Kazakhstan in the middle of a desert with a bicycle, and he's just like, you know, what the hell are you doing? And of course he was like, this is not the road, you know, the road is three miles that way. So what happened was in Russian or did you know in Russian? He no, no one spoke English. So um. But luckily, he pointed me towards the actual road. Uh, so it turns out what happened was, I took a turn, and where I thought it was the right road, it was actually some old military road. About three or four hours, I was just going down these military tracks, you know, in the middle, literally going cross country through the sand pit in the middle of Central Asia. The road was actually kind of, I was, I was going parallel, because I had my compass, luckily, and I was heading east, the road was heading east as well, so even though I was lost, just kind of zigzagging along, I was going, you know, in line with the road, so all I had to do was kind of go towards it, and you know what, sure enough, I found the perfect road, plenty of cars, plenty of people, shops, water, all that stuff. Did you treat yourself to a hotel that night? That's what I want to know. Or did you sleep in your tent? No, I slept in a tent and I got woken up by a load of cannons in the morning. What I would have done is, I'd have got a five-star hotel, and I would have had the best night's sleep of my life knowing that I just made it out of the desert. There's one problem with that though, Ron. What's that? The closest five-star hotel was probably about 2,000 miles away at that point. The closest hotel was about 1,000 miles away, so there was nothing around. Well, that is a problem there, guys. Pat couldn't even trip himself to a hotel. That's making my desert experience sound a little bit weak. Since um, we went out in a group of 16, and then 
you know, and I had me, I mean, and Scotty was with me. That's true. Do you know what? Having someone with you, it is good. But Scotty really helps. Scotty had, Scotty didn't say anything. Didn't seem to affect Scotty at all. Do you reckon he's been lost in the desert before? Maybe it's maybe it's like a regular thing for Scotty. You know, maybe it happens all the time. I don't know. I think he does like an adventure. He did watch Into the Wild, and he did feel like that was a bit of him. Lucky enough, guys, we are here still to tell the story. I got to be honest with you. That night, got back to the hotel, showered up, and I went and party till like four a.m. in the morning. See, I just slept in my tent and got woken up by camels. So oh, not see. quite the same experience. I took over the club. I let everyone in Vegas know how to party, and they're still trying to pick up on them techniques I had that night in that club on how to party at the Cromwell Hotel and uh, Dre's. Being a desert episode, let's, let's give people some tips, you know? Let's give people the top five tips for what to do when you're lost in a desert. Okay, and if you do get lost in a desert, you can't sue us. Yeah, 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 let's, yeah. I'm gonna it's, say that right now because this is not real survival techniques. It's just no, just this, you up we're not, that, you know, we're not Bear grills. Or they like, is. Or, yeah. So, right. Number one, you're in with number one. Number one, don't be an idiot, bring water. That's okay. that's where we both went wrong, you know? That is true. We had well, no we did, water. I, we did have water, but it was on a different car. Well, that's no use where the car isn't there, though. No, right? exactly. So you had no water, essentially. Number two, um, an external battery pack to make sure that you can keep your mobile phone charged up. You're in a desert, you know, you want to take those cool selfies. Number three, a compass is a bit of a must. A, do you know what? A compass probably saved my life. But, so. The only problem with a compass, I'm going to say, if you don't know where you're going, a compass ain't going to help no you. Good, yeah. you but, know. but it's going to keep you from going round in circles. It will. You're going to at least go in a straight line. Yeah. So, you know, North, that's, that's a start. South that's west. a start. Yeah. 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 Well, that's number, that's number three. Number, number three. Uh, I think we should give people a genuine tip, you know, which would be not to panic. Because I'm sure you can agree, you know, if you panic, it's not going to make your life any easier. It's not going to make the situation any better. You just no. have to keep calm, you know? And it's true. You're never coming back to that desert, are you? You're never no, going to go back. No, I asked me last year and said, no, it's all right. I don't fancy going. Uh, um, <laughs> right, I think we need one more. One more tip. Let me uh, think about it. Let's, let's give you this Eddie. one. That was a tough one. Number five, I mean, with it, some really strong points of how to get out of the desert. Right, I'll go a good one. Go on. So let's say, you know, you were lost for a couple of minutes. Yeah. Um, you had no water. Let's say you were lost for a few hours, yeah. and we all know the Bear Grylls survival tip, you know, when you've got no water, you're lost in the middle of nowhere, what do you do? Well, you get a plastic bag, and you put it over some leaves, and you can play that water like that, because the sun comes out, and because it's plastic, it creates um, condensation inside See, but the that's, bag. That's good, but not in the desert. I was actually going with um, the Drink Your Own Tea one. Would you ever do that? Yeah, I would if I if that was going to save me life. <laughs> but do you know what? I've come out of it because it's just, just coming to me now. The best thing to do, and it's actually the best survival tip is before you go, just don't go. Don't go, or at least tell someone <laughs> where you're going. That do you know what? That is really clever, actually. That's that's you a good know, tip because I one, didn't do it. He didn't do it. I've watched 128 hours where we get stuck down oh. now. If he'd let anyone know where he was going. Maybe they could have found him a little bit sooner and he wouldn't have to chop off his arm to get out of the old... Spoiler head. alert. We've ruined two films. It don't matter. At this point, they're like five years old in movies. Yeah, but, you know, there's probably people that... If, if you haven't watched Into the Wild or 128 Hours, we're really sorry. I'm not sorry. That's just mean. It is, but do you know what? You need to realise the realistic facts of what can happen when you go off in any deserts or you go off exploring on your own. You need to realise the consequences if you don't take precautions. I think that's gonna. I think sure. Gonna... That was that was a good little episode. Yeah. That was a good episode. Series, yeah. What are we gonna talk about next time? I've got a good one. Yeah. What have you got? I'm gonna talk about this. Really bugs me. Okay. Oh god. No, you're gonna like this one. Okay. It's the fact that when you've got a little bit of food around your mouth and no one tells you, Whoa. or you've got something stuck in your tooth, because I'm gonna touch base on this one because this happened to me a few years ago. I'm not going to spoil it. You guys are going to have to tune in to the next Tea Talk to find out what happened to me for 16 hours and no one let me know. That sounds worse than getting lost in a desert. It was quite bad, especially when you're smiling at everyone. But I'm not going to go <laughs> any further than that. Okay? I can't wait to hear about it. I can't wait to tell you. So, right, guys, thanks for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Let us know what you think about Tea Talk because we're going to make this into a full series, okay? Actually, tell you what, shouldn't they give us some suggestions? Give us some suggestions, guys. Yeah. Any kind, any sort of information you want out of us, 
this is your perfect opportunity now to get through some questions so we can give you the answers, hopefully relating to both of us, so we can both touch on different experiences around the same issues. What do you think about that? I think that's, yeah. <laughs> Leave your suggestions in the comments, guys. There we go. Right, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next see you episode. Next time. Boom.